Steel type Pokemon. They're big, they're strong, and they're intimidating. Well, most of them anyway. So join me as I tear my way through the Paldea region with my team of exclusively Steel type Pokemon. Also, I'll only be using the new Pokemon in this game, so you won't be seeing any of these duds in my team. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who will be our starter? I mean, none of these losers are or will become a Steel type, so any of them will do, right? Wrong! The correct choice is Quaxley. And not because this little die is so adorable, but because it gives Nomona the fire type Fukoko, actually making her somewhat of a threat in some of the fights. Perfect choice with the Quaxley. Yeah, um, this duck is literally going to drown your crocodile and then get thrown in the trash. Well, somebody had a big night last night, hey? Listen, if you agree to become my personal bike, I'll give you this sandwich, which is perfect for a hangover. We have a deal? Perfect. Our first stop is the academy and... So, um, can none of the teachers see that these kids are not real? I mean, look at them. Look at them. Cleaning all this up is going to be such a pain. My man, I think you need to take a good hard look at yourself. All right, enough sidetracking. I jump on my Maridon and we start our journey to capture our true starter for the run, Tinker Tink. Don't let this little pink girl fool you. Once fully evolved, she's a monster with that hammer. There's also a gimmick we can get, but this treasure chest ain't made of steel just yet, so it's going to have to chill for now. With our perfectly assembled team of a whopping one usable Pokemon, we head to the first gym to take on Katie and her bugs. First up is Nimble, and this little bug is Metal Clawed a few times while also giving me a free attack boost before it goes down. Also, with that kill, I get enough EXP to level up to 16 for the Tarantula that comes out next. Metal Claw does just under half damage, and the hammer takes an insurance, bring me into the orange. This works out well as now my orange berry is eaten and I'm relatively healthy. A couple more Metal Claws get the kill while also getting another attack up, putting me at plus two for her ace. Last is Teddy Ursa, and thanks to my attack buffs, this can 1v1 the bear and take it out for the win. Katie gives us our first gym badge and takes a photo with me. Our next target is the Stony Cliff Titan, so we head to the giant crab and... Um, wait, I... I lost? Well, this is awkward. Back to the beginning, I guess. We start the game, we grab the duck, we kill the duck, we get a new Tinker Tank and a treasure chest, and before I beat Katie and her bugs, we go on a detour to the other side of the map to get one of the best held items in the game, Leftovers. We beat up Katie's Pokemon for the second time, and now we're back to get our revenge. With the Leftovers, we can easily stay healthy enough to take out the Titan with Metal Claws. The second phase is easier, as Arvanan is close to pitch in, although the hammer played her part. Arvanan gives us his first Titan badge, and now we can do this. All right, that was karma. As part of the next gym challenge, we collect an army of stuttering sunflowers before heading on to take on Brassius. Using leftovers, protect and draining kisses, we can simply not die in this battle. Both his petty lil and small of can't do enough damage, allowing me to take them both out before his A pseudo wudo comes out. Even then, my leftovers protect and draining kiss strategy safely keeps us healthy before we can deliver the final blow on a tree. Brassius isn't happy, but he still hands over the second gym badge. So far, it's been the Hammer Show, and although I wanted to add some more team members, everything is overleveled for the next Titan fight. Oh, and we casually ran into a shiny Taurus, by the way. Although, let's be honest, this is really a disappointing shiny. Okay, where exactly are those boulders coming from? Actually, I, I don't want to know. As we dodge the falling boulders, we reach the peak where the open sky Titan awaits us. Unfortunately for this bird, the hammer resists all its moves while continuously staying healthy using super effective draining kisses and leftovers. Easiest fight yet. Ivan then gives us a badge for helping him, tells us a sad story about his dog, and we can finally ride on water with our Maridon. Team Star is finally on our radar, and the first one on the chopping block is Giacomo and his dark types. And with the new level cap, we can also get the hammer some company. The room is caught, and yes, I know it's a female, but how could I not call this thing Vin Diesel? Now that we've doubled the size of our team, we go to the first base and... Right, so we actually can't take on the base unless we have at least three Pokemon in our party. I do some backtracking and I eventually come across a Pornard. But because this thing is level 22, I can't actually use it for the Giacomo battle, but it can sit in the party, giving us the three Pokemon needed, allowing us to raid the base. Giacomo comes out and we can begin the battle. 
Vin Diesel can slowly take out his pornard while using leftovers and protect to stay healthy. Next is a Starmobile, so I switch in the hammer who can terrestrialize and take it out using super effective draining kisses. Giacomo hands over the badge and agrees to shut shop. With the new level cap, we can start using Sekiro in battles. The first thing I get him to do is clear the entire gimmickle population as we want to get as many coins as possible. By the way, it's kind of nuts that a level 22 bishop can easily solo a level 50 gimmickle. Oh look, it's, it's another shiny. Okay, let's uh, poke a doll out of here while we still have a chance. And finally, after clearing out every single treasure chest I could find, Tony Hawk is ready to evolve. This Pokemon's actually so cool that even the Tauruses want to watch him in action taking on regular trainers. Before we can take on Iono and her electric Pokemon, we need to fight Nimona. And you better believe that Tony Hawk's takes the stage here. Nimona leads with a rock rough and a critical hit Hex is enough to take it out. Paul is next and another Hex from Tony Hawk gets the kill. Last is a Crocola and all it takes is two terrestrialized Hex to take it out and give us the win over Nimona. After the battle, we do some final preparations for the gym fight, getting everyone to the level cap, which means the hammer finally gets to evolve, becoming a Tinker Tough. With our preparations complete, we are now ready for Iono. Tony Hawk sets up with a substitute and they can one-shot the watch roll with a terrestrialized Hex. Next in is a Luxio and a critical hit Hex also takes it out. Now it's Bellybot, but a Hex can only deal just over half damage. Bellybot breaks the sub with a spark, so on the next turn I go for another substitute. It goes for another spark, but the substitute doesn't break, allowing us to follow up with another Hex, getting the KO. Iona now brings out her ace, Ms. Magius. It terrestrializes into an electric type, and it goes for a charge beam, which misses. Tony Hawks goes for the Hex, doing about 40% damage. On the next turn, the charge beam lands, breaking the sub, and even getting a special attack boost. Tony Hawks goes for another Hex, bringing the ace right down to the red. Iona then throws the fight, Gone for a Confuse Ray, but our good as gold ability prevents us from getting confused, allowing us to finish the fight with one last Hex. That's Iono beaten and another gym badge in the bag. Team Star is back on my radar and it's Mela and her fire types next. We raid the base and it's not long before Mela comes out. Tony Hawks takes the lead and I terrestrialize losing my fire weakness, going for a substitute, hoping that it can survive at least one hit. Unfortunately, Torkoal can break the sub on its first turn, essentially wasting my first turn. We don't mess around on the next turn, and we go for a Hex doing just over half damage, while Torkoal hits us with a Flame Wheel, leaving us with just over half HP after Leftovers recovery. Another Hex finishes off the Turtle, leaving Mela with the Starmobile. The Starmobile goes for a Screech, however my good as gold ability makes me immune. We go for a Hex, which does decent damage, but things don't look good. Mela then goes for another Scre uh, uh, Screech? Okay, well, fine by me. While Tony Hawk gets the card down to about 50% HP with the second Hex. She then goes for another Screech, and at this point, I have no idea what's going on. Like, does she want me to win? We follow up with a Hex, and now we have the Starmobile on the ropes. Mela finally goes for a Blazing Talk, doing good damage and getting the burn, but it's a little too late as Tony Hawk can finish off the car and get us the win over Mela. She hands over the badge and we continue on. The lurking still titan as our next target and Sekiro holding an Eviolite can take out the first phase of this giant metal worm with a few low kicks. The Orthworm then powers up by eating some herbs but it still stands no chance against Sekiro and we take it out. Arvin then gets his hands on some more herbs and gives us another badge for helping him out. After the titan battle, we catch our own Earthworm giving us a massive ground immunity. Karaskafe is our next stop and upon hearing that I wanted to take him on, Kofu flees the town. So the locals just casually live in a, in a city with the sandstorms causing havoc, huh? Can't imagine they get many tourists here. We find Kofu hiding out in a nearby town and after cornering him, he agrees to take us on back at Kaskarafa. Kofu enters the battlefield and we begin the fight. He leads with Veluza and Tony Hawk can take out the fish with back-to-back -back thunderbolts. Now it's Mog Trio that comes in only to be sent straight back to Kofu with another big Thunderbolt. Finally, it's his ace, Krabobnable, and we hit it hard with a Thunderbolt, bringing it below half HP. We then get hit with a massive Crab Hammer, which was too close for comfort. On the next turn, we finish the Crab off with a Thunderbolt, beating Kofu, and getting our hands on another Gym Badge. Next up, we have another Team Star base to raid, and this time it's Atticus and his Poison-type Pokemon. He leads with a Skuntake, and expecting a Flamethrower, I terrestrialize to lose my Fire Weakness, only to get hit by a super effective sucker punch. Thunderbolt does decent damage, but it's still short from a two hit KO. I go for a substitute on the next turn, and then Skuntank goes for a toxic, which fails. 
Skunk Tank then breaks a summon the next turn using a Sucker Punch. Will I bring the Skunk into kill range using Hex? On the next turn, the Sucker Punch fails. Will I safely get up another sub? Skunk Tank then breaks a sub with a Sucker Punch, but Tony Hawk gets the kill with one more Thunderbolt. Atticus then brings in Rever Room, and I switch in Miss Slug into an Assurance, which does minimal damage. Rever Room then uses Bulldoze on Miss Slug, which actually heals us back up, while a Bulldoze from us brings it below half health and drops its speed, allowing us to take it out on the next turn. Now it's Muck, and this pile of gunk only seems to be going for Sludge Wave, which doesn't affect us. A few bulldozers later, and we KO the Muck. Finally, the Starmobile comes into action, and Miss Luck can chip away at it with bulldozers and mud slaps before it gets low on health. Between Sekiro, then Diesel, and the Hammer, we can slowly chip away at the Starmobile before delivering the final blow. This turned out to be tougher than expected, but we get the win and add another badge to the collection. Keeping the momentum going, we waste no time and we head straight to take on Larry. Sekiro takes a lead, but that's only because I want him leading for the Nimona battle straight after. This means we switch into Tony Hawk and we can only go for substitute multiple times until Kamala runs out of sucker punches. From here, it's back-to-back -back Thunderbolts from Tony Hawk and we take it out. The Dunspunt switches in and it eats a Thunderbolt relatively well. It then hits us hard with a super effective drill run, breaking our sub. I Trestalize in the next turn to lose my ground weakness, and I land another Thunderbolt, while the Dunspans goes for a glare, which thanks to good as gold, will do nothing. One more Thunderbolt gets a kill and leaves Larry with just his ace. Seraptor comes in and Terrestrializes, but Tony Hawk can 1v1 the bird and win the battle against Larry. Larry gets us lunch, and we are one step closer to Victory Road. The motor is next up, and this battle was kind of intense. Sekiro can eat a couple of bites while taking out the Lycan Rock. Pulmo comes in and I bring in Miss Slug who gets slammed with 5 arm thrusts. Wanting to keep Miss Slug healthy, I switch in Tony Hawk and this thing decides to go for a spark. Like really? Thankfully, on the next turn a Shadow Ball gets the kill. Now it's Gumi and I want to set up a sub before a Skala Dirge comes out. The sub survives a Water Pulse from the Gumi and a Terrestrialized Shadow Ball is enough to take it out. Now it's Skala Dirge that comes out and we hit it for massive damage with a big Terrestrialized Shadow Ball. It goes for a Torch Son, which will break the sub, and wait, what? Since when did Torch Song hit through Substitute? Fortunately, a second Shadow Ball does finish it off, but that could have gone bad. After making some um, amazing ham sandwiches, forcing only chances to spawn, we get some big evolutions. First, the hammer becomes a Tinkerton, and then Vin Diesel evolves into a River Room. Now it's Rhyme and a ghost waiting for us, so we scale the snowy mountains until we get to Montenovera City. After she shamelessly embarrasses a young child for working at a supermarket, we agree to take her on. The plan was simple, and that was to double up on one slot at a time. First it's the Burnett slot that gets taken down from Vin Diesel and Sekiro. Then the Houndstone comes in, only to be double teamed and KO'd. The Toxicity does use a Discharge, bringing Sekiro into the red, but also busting Mimikyu's disguise for us. Sekiro does take out the Toxicity with a Night Slash, leaving only the busted Mimikyu. Miss Slug switches in for Sekiro as a safety measure before Vin Diesel comes in and gets the kill with a Poison Jab. Rob gives us a Gym Badge while taking a photo. Now it's time for something exciting, the Quaking Earth Titan. Why is this exciting, you ask? Well, I'll explain right after the fight. Miss Slug is a great matchup for this robot looking Don fan and can easily take care of it in both phases. And of course, Arvin is always close by, making sure he gets his hands on those herbs. He thanks me again, giving me a badge, and his Mabostiff is slowly making a recovery. Okay, so about that exciting part. Now that we've beaten the Quaking Earth Titan, if we head back to where we fought the giant robot, we can actually run into our own Iron Treads for ourselves. With the complete team of 6 Pokemon, we can now take on Tulip and her Psychic team. Well, we would have, if Nimona didn't literally stalk us across the entire map, always looking for a battle. The strategy for this fight is similar to the last. Sekiro is able to 1v1 the Lycan Rock with a couple of Metal Claws. Pormon is next, so protecting a quite effective fighting move, I bring in Tony Hawk. A couple of Shadow Balls from our Golden Boy is enough to take out the Electric Bear. Now it's Sligo who comes in, and a Shadow Ball does just under half damage, but gets a special defense drop. The Slimy Dragon then lends a Dragon Pulse, doing pathetic damage. We use this opportunity to recover a couple of times to get all our health back before we take it out with a Terrestrialized Shadow Ball. Last is a Skelly Dirge, but we can survive one Torch Song from that monster and take it out with back-to-back -back Shadow Balls. Hey, Tony Hawk, did you want to play the Emotional Spectrum Practice game?
I'll, I'll take that as a no then. Tilla makes her way to the battle court and we begin. Sekiro can easily take out her lead for Rifle Rig with a couple of Night Slashes while eating some crunches. Gardevoir jumps in and now it's time for Tony Hawk to take over. We switch in on a Dazzling Gleam doing minimal damage before destroying the Gardevoir with a super effective Shadow Ball. Espartha does outspeed and does heavy damage with the Shadow Ball, bringing us into the orange. However, we follow up with our own stab to Wrestler's Shadow Ball, absolutely ending this Emu's life. Her Ace Floor just does come in and I decide to risk it going for a Shadow Ball. We are just short from the kill and Floor just responds with a massive Moon Blast that we somehow survived on 10 HP. We finish the Floor just off with a second Shadow Ball and Tilep gives us another badge for the collection. Back to the snowy mountains we go to face our final gym leader. Okay, so I just noticed this. But why does my Maridon look like it's a shiny when doing this gym challenge? Today's not a great day to face me. You know, you're better off giving up. Yeah, th that's not happening, Grisha. Vin Diesel takes a lead against his Frostmoth, and we waste no time going for the shift gear, raising our speed and attack. Frostmoth goes for a Tailwind, which is fine. We double down going for another shift gear, while Frostmoth goes for a Blizzard, and we get a huge dodge. Not wanting to be greedy, we go for an Iron Head, and we exterminate the Frozen Bug. Bear Tick is also helpless, as I terrestrialize, and an Iron Head is just too much for it. See, Titan is much bulkier, but even this thing couldn't survive a hit. Finally, the Ace Altaria is next, and, well, yeah, it goes down to an iron head. Grusha gives us our final gym badge, and now we can take on the Elite Four. Well, technically we can, but before I do that, I want to wrap up a few other missions. First up, we have the Fairy Team Star base with their leader, Atticus, waiting. Yeah, so it uh, turns out having a team full of Steel-type Pokemon is really going to be good against a team filled with Fairy Pokemon. Who would have thought, huh? Now we have the final Titan to take care of, but that gets put on hold for the moment, as with a new level cap, Sekiro is able to evolve into a Bisharp. Although, we don't stop there, as we go on and we start murdering other Bisharps, specifically the ones with the, uh, the baby Pornards around, so it can trigger its final evolution, King Gambit. Okay, so now with our true final team assembled, we can go on and take on the last Titan Pokemon, the False Dragon. Tony Hawk is a star of the show, against the Dodonzo, by Thunderbolting and recovering when needed. And then the hammer can completely wall the Tatsugiri using super effective draining kisses to deal damage and stay healthy. Arvin gets his hands on the last lot of herbs and gives us his final gym badge, and more importantly, his Mabostiff has fully recovered. This scene gets me every time. We have one more Team Star base to raid and defeat before we can start the end game. And this time it's Eerie and her fighting types. As usual, we storm the base, squashing everything in sight until their leader has seen enough and shows her face. Well, well technically she's still covering her face, but you know what I mean. Eerie leads with Toxicroak and hits Tony Hawk with a sucker punch doing decent damage. Tony Hawk then goes for a Psychic, which is four times effective absolutely ending this frog. Now it's Lucario, so I switch into Robotnik into a Dark Pulse, which he takes well before outspeeding and crushing the fan favorite Pokemon with an Earthquake. Passive Man hops in, so I tag in Tony Hawk back in for free as a close combat doesn't affect me. One big psychic later and the monkey is defeated. Speaking of monkeys, Annihilate is next and this thing terrifies me. I switch in the hammer, we can take a Rage Fist reasonably well. Annihilate lands a close combat, but because we have Terrestrialize, it does minimal damage. The hammer then responds with a Draining Kiss, which deals just over half health, but also completely healing us back up. A Raging Fist from Annihilate then does some serious damage, but we hold on and we take it out with a second Draining Kiss. Finally, it's the Starmobile, and the hammer can also solo this hunk of junk with a few more Draining Kisses, beating Eerie and earning the last badge of the game. With all 18 badges, we make our way to the Elite Four building. The first trainer we need to take care of is arguably the most difficult, Rika and her ground types. Tony Hawk is first and can finish off her Whisk Catch with a couple of Terrestrialized Shadow Balls. Rika then switches in her Dug Trio, who goes for a Sandstorm. Although, that's the last thing it ever does as Tony Hawk gets the kill with a critical hit Shadow Ball. 
Tamarup tags in and it survives on the slither after Terrestrialized Shadow Ball. Thankfully, it went for a yawn, but guess what? We have good as gold. Donphan is next, and Sturdy is the only reason this Pokemon can survive a Shadow Ball. But an Earthquake can't take out Tony Hawk, allowing him to send Donphan six feet under. Finally, it's a Clodsire, and expecting a ground move, I switch in Miss Slug, who is immune to them. From here, Miss Slug can take out the Clodsire with a few Iron Heads, giving us the win against Rika. Now it's my actual rival, Poppy. As we are both still users, it is now time for me to stamp my authority on this toddler. Robotnik starts a fight and lends a critical hit earthquake, decimating her Copperaja. Poppy brings in Bronzong and expecting this thing to have levitate, I go for the assurance, which was close to taking it out. Bronzong replies with a big earthquake, but we're still in good shape and we take it out on the next turn. Corviknight swoops in and Robotnik goes for an Ice Spinner, doing minimal damage to the bird. It then responds with an Iron Defense, doubling its defense and making it harder to take out. As I need a special attacker, Tony Hawk switches in and the timing was perfect as it went for a Body Press, which we are immune to. On the next turn, we go for a Shadow Ball and we're just short on the kill. Corviknight then lands a Brave Bird, doing measly damage and even taking itself out with its own recoil. Now it's Magnazone, so I switch in Robotnik while it goes for a Light Screen. Earthquake brings the Pokemon down to its sturdy while we eat the incoming Flash Cannon. Magnazone goes down on the next turn, and now it's time for Poppy to bring in her Tinkerton. I leave Robotnik in, and an Earthquake one-shots her terrestrialized Tinkerton, proving once and for all that I am in fact the superior Steel Trainer. But we already knew that. Larry's back, although this time he's ditched the normal types, and now he's got a bunch of flying Pokemon. I have Robotnik out, who can deal with his Tropius with a four times effective Ice Spinner. In comes the Raptor, so I use Tony Hawk and Sekiro to switch back back and forth until his close combat PP has run out. From here, Robotnik comes in and is just short from the KO with an Ice Spinner. Sarapta lands a Brave Bird doing small damage, but also takes itself out with Recoil. Now it's Altaria, so the Hammer switches in while taking damage from a Flamethrower. Then it's three consecutive draining kisses that get the kill and keep us healthy. Larry is starting to sweat and brings an Oracorio. The Hammer dwindles it down slowly with more draining kisses before unleashing her super move, Gigaton Hammer, absolutely flattening the bird. And finally, Larry's ace, Flamingo comes in and terrestrializes, but it was all for nothing as the hammer can terrestrialize herself and can take it out with some back-to-back -back draining kisses. Our final test before the champion awaits us and it's against Hassel. Robotnik takes the lead, but his Noven outspeeds and lands a Super Fang, bringing me down to exactly half health. We retaliate with an Ice Spinner, which does get the first kill of the fight. Dragalge is next, although one Earthquake is more than enough to finish it. Hassel ain't messing around anymore and decides to bring in his powerhouse, Haxorus. We go for an Ice Spinner, but we fall just short from the KO, allowing Haxorus to land a crunch. One more Ice Spinner from Robotnik, and we have eliminated the threat. Flapple does try its best to save the day, but who are we kidding? See ya, buddy. Finally, the ace back Scalibur takes the field and I can safely pivot into Tony Hawk as it goes for a brick break. Then I pivot once again, bringing in the hammer, taking no damage as it goes for a glaive rush. With the hammer in, we can easily 1v1 the Baskalibur using draining kisses and beating all four members of the Elite Four. With my team's final preparations complete, we head outside to take on the champion, Gita. Miss Slug is out and we shed tail setting up a sub for Sekiro as he switches in while her Aspartha sets up a reflect. A dazzling gleam from the Emu is enough to break the sub instantly while we double our attack with the Swords Dance. I go for one more Swords Dance, getting the plus for attack, while Aspartha deals decent damage with a dazzling gleam. The next dazzling gleam crits us, putting me below half health, but I go for a brick break to make sure the reflect is not up. Aspartha then tries one last chance to stop my plans, but a dazzling gleam is not enough, and we brick break that Emu straight back to Gita. And just like that, we have set up to win. Avalon goes down to a single brick break. Gagot is destroyed by an X scissor. The loser outspeeds and... Okay, that was too close for comfort. Get out of here, you fish. Gita has her own King Gambit, but Sekiro proves to be the alpha, getting the kill with a single brick break. Finally, it's her ace Glamora, and I decide to play it safe, so I switch in the hammer who can eat an earth power before sending his Pokemon straight back to area zero with a super effective Gigaton hammer. Gita the champion has been beaten, and now we are a champion ranked trainer. Before I can finish the job and dispose of Nimona for the last time, we have a few loose ends that need to be tied up for both the Titan and Team Star storylines. These fights were all pretty unmemorable, so I'll quickly go over them. First up, we have Arvin. Vin Diesel Magnet rises and then sets up with shift gears in front of his Greedon. 
Once he sets up, the slaughter begins and we can one-shot every one of his Pokemon, including the Mabostiff that we spent the whole game trying to help. Good work, Arvin. Director Clavel is next on the chopping block and we have no issues setting up with Nasty Plot on his Oranguru before going on a rampage Thunderbolting and Shadow Bowling everything in sight. After the director, it is Penny who we must face. Here, I use Miss Slug to shed tail into Sekiro in front of her Umbreon. Umbreon can't break the sub, and Sekiro gets off two sword dancers with a sub still up. Our Samurai Warrior then completes his duty by assassinating all of Penny's EV evolutions and beating Team Star's biggest boss, Penny. With all the side content done, we can now head to the plaza for the main event against Nimona. Well, m main event is probably an exaggeration, if I'm being honest. She starts a fight going for a drill run on Miss Slug, but Earth Eater keeps us safe from ground moves. Miss Slug goes for an Iron Head, and to my surprise, her Lycan Rock actually survives the hit. Nimona sets up a Stealth Rocks, which is fine, while Miss Slug takes out her Lycan Rock. Paul Mode is next, and we all know her fighting move is coming our way, so I slip in Tony Hawk, who is immune. We then start setting up nasty plots on her Pormont, and we can use Recover when getting low on health. At this point, Tony Hawk can completely take over. First, her Pormont goes down to a Shadow Ball, then Nimona recklessly sends out her Orthworm, only to suffer the same fate. The Dust Pants is immune to Ghost Moves, so a Thunderbolt gets the job done. Gudra is a bulky dragon, but a plus 6 Shadow Ball is still too much for it. And now only her Skeletor Dirge remains, but it stands no chance, and its fate is sealed. Nimona has been beaten for the last time of the run, and she couldn't be happier about it, apparently. Before we can truly crown ourselves victorious, we have one more test ahead of us. We head to the Forbidden Area Zero entrance, and we meet up with Ivan to complete the Way Home quest. Nimona and Penny are also there, so they tag along, and we jump on Moraiden, who can safely get us to the bottom of Area Zero. It is here we must make our way deeper and deeper until we get to the bottom with the lab that Professor Turo is waiting in. Only, it's not Professor Turo, but a robot with all his thoughts and memories. Turns out that the real professor died in an explosion years ago, and this AI version has been the one communicating with us. Once we reach the deepest part of Area Zero, we need to deactivate the time machine, which means we must beat Professor Turo in a battle. The battle begins, and Turo sends in Iron Moth, while I send in my own future Pokemon, Robotnik. As Robotnik was holding the energy booster, our attack raises by one stage at the start of the battle. Combine that with an earthquake, and this Iron Moth is sent straight back to the future. Turo then decides to throw me another free kill, as Iron Thorns is also four times weak to an earthquake. Now it's Iron Jugglers, and this can outspeed and deal big damage with a flamethrower. Unfortunately, the only way Robotnik can survive is if we get the kill with a super effective Ice Spinner, but of course, it survives on one HP. So Robotnik goes down, giving us our first death. I decide to bring in the hammer and she terrestrializes, allowing her to eat a flamethrower before taking it out with a draining kiss. Iron Hands drops it next, so in comes Miss Slug into a critical hit Iron Head, which tickles. We then shed Tail out of here, which lets the hammer come back in with the sub still up, as a drain punch doesn't break it. Unfortunately, a draining kiss is just short from doing half, and this Hariyama clone breaks the sub, meaning I'll need a switch again. Tony Hawk tags in and gets a critical hit Shadow Ball, which is enough to kill. Turo's on his last legs as Iron Bundle drops in, but a Thunderbolt from Tony Hawk fries the Deli Bird imposter. Last but not least, Iron Valiant enters the battlefield. It goes for Spirit Breaks, but we can eat them up and hit hard with Shadow Balls coming out on top at the end of it. And with that, the Professor has been beaten, and we've beaten the game using only new Steel-type Pokemon. Thank you for watching.